Hi all, we're going to look at another instructive game today and the central theme this time will be the knight on f5. So white was Kasparov and black was John Nunn. The year was 1982 in the Luzerne Olympiad. So Kasparov played d4 and Nunn chose his modern Benoni defence which was his favourite up to that point and I believe he had written a book on it just um, prior to this game. Kasparov chose the ultra sharp continuation with f4. Now in terms of our main strategic theme, f4 does present a continual concern for black. You know, will white play e5? Or as it turned out in the game, white actually played f5, which was the prelude to having a strong knight on f5. So we'll see how this, this occurred. After bishop g7, bishop b5 check. And now it is known that knight bd7 could give uh, white a clear advantage with e5, but I, I don't want to go into that. That's quite technical variations there, and very sharp. Nunn simply played knight fd7, and now Kasparov played a4, so he doesn't want black to stretch on the queen side later with a6 and b5. But actually, after knight a6, knight f3, Nunn played knight b4. Now this is interesting. From the point of view of the central theme of the game, the knight on f5, Kasparov has already perhaps the intention of not playing e5 later, but actually f5. Now the knight coming to b4 means it will be difficult for that knight to keep in contact with the e5 square, which will make it more tempting for white to play f5, if and only if Kasparov, as in the game, removes this knight from d7, because then f5 won't let black have this critical e5 square for a knight. So we'll see now that Kasparov first castles, and after a6, he voluntarily gives up the two bishops. So he plays bishop takes d7 check. Now this is a very important prelude to, to the theme of the game, the knight on f5, because now it is perfectly okay, after bishop takes d7, to really now consider playing f5. Kasparov simply played f5 here, so we're temporarily um, giving up a pawn if black wanted it. Um, but actually here John Nunn first castled, but you will note that because of that, that removal of the knight, the e5 square is not as great for black as it could have been, and this knight will be struggling to get back to contact the e5 square. So now the move bishop g5 was played, and this is a very hard question for black. If he moves his queen then f6, and that's very very dangerous. If he plays f6, as in the game, now Kasparov simply played bishop f4, so eyeing this sensitive d6 pawn. And now, in this position, none actually played g takes f5, so a materialistic move. And it is the prelude to this knight being very well established on the f5 square. So we'll see now that with white's um, next move, bishop takes d6, Sparf is asking for the exchange of, of two pieces here. After bishop takes a4, temporarily, you know, black nabs that pawn in order to um, take the bishop on d6. But that light squared bishop was a critical defender of the f5 square. And we'll see now that simply the move knight h4 here gives white a big advantage. So the knight's coming to f5 with quite a devastating effect. In fact, so devastating, the game didn't last very long from this position. After f takes e4, Kasparov played knight f5. And now, after queen d7, knight takes e4. And black's in real trouble here. There's multiple threats like knight takes c5. Maybe d6 is also strong. None played king h8. And after knight takes c5... It's all over. Nunn resigns. He resigned principally because of queen takes d5. Then white could have queen takes d5, knight takes, and here knight e6. So forking rook and bishop winning the exchange. So Nunn had just resigned after, after that knight takes c5 move. But we see you know, the devastating effect of that knight, you know, always pressurizing the g7 bishop. So that played a critical role in this um, quick victory. Let's have a quick overview and summary of this game. So Nunn played the modern Benoni against Kasparov. Kasparov played the ultra-sharp f4 line. 
So it often has the idea of a later e5, but in this game, Kasparov wanted to play f5. So he voluntarily gave up the two bishops once black played a6. So leaving the possibility now of f5 being quite strong. And after castles, he played bishop g5. So he's prompting black to hem in his own bishop with f6. And after bishop f4, he encouraged black to temporarily win this pawn. But this really gave a fine knight outpost for white in this continuation. So after knight h4, f takes e4, knight f5. White was clearly better now. Queen d7, knight takes e4. And white just has a big advantage. If something like b6, by the way, just protect, trying to protect c5, then in this position, rook a3, according to Ribbicret, is very strong, with the idea of the rook transferring maybe to g3 or even h3. So that would be a strong attack, showing again this, this powerful knight on f5. For example, king h8, rook g3, rook f7, and now here, knight e d6 would be winning the exchange. So in the game, though, it finished very quickly after king h8, knight takes c5, and black just resigns here. A crushing win, only 21 moves, and it really dented the popularity of the modern Benoni as a weapon of choice against white playing 1d4. I hope you enjoyed that game. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.